maybe a, a little presentation uh, of my um, yeah my bio. Uh, it's maybe not uh, very common, um, so it's gonna be a, a small history, a little bit. Uh, I didn't want to make it too technical. Uh, I really wanted to explain a little bit uh, how how I moved to uh, towards this men uh, men's world. In fact, uh, so uh, when I was a kid, since I was a kid, I never played with dolls. I always, uh, I always was attracted um, by um, space. Um, okay, my father took me to go and see the planes, to see me, to see trains, etc. So probably also there was a little bit of uh, the thing about my father, my mother. They were like you know 68 uh, ages, so um, they were maybe a little bit feministic. So they said, my my girl uh, needs to be uh, doing something in techniques. So they, they did so. Um, I also, uh, yeah, always have been, I'm half Austrian, half Belgian. So I always have been attracted uh, also by the sea and the mountains. Really, um, I felt since the beginning, I liked to put my body in situations which are not comfortable. Uh, that was always very important. Uh, so climbing, um, uh, getting into the sea, I liked cold weather. I was always uh, looking for this challenge and very proud of being uh, somewhere where other people did not go. So that was a little bit of, uh, of a red line also with, uh, with space exploration. Uh, very soon, and it started in 98, so back then I was 16, uh, I um, I've been sent all alone uh, with big planes <laughs> to uh, to uh, to America uh, to uh, to follow some first. Okay, these these are kid stuff, but uh, uh, it's a, it's a space camp. So when you come from a country like Belgium or uh, and you go all alone uh, uh, with, with a plane to America and you and you do this course, um, this was a little bit. Uh, the, the, this was really something that made already the difference. I had the chance to be really uh, supported by my parents, um, but also from um, the Belgium uh, scientific uh, delegation. Um, somehow they, they, they really uh, they knew about this um, and they always offered me the possibility to go a little bit further uh, uh, in this endeavor. At the time, when you're a kid, you don't know really the difference between men and women you don't feel it the first real difference started when i went to university um so uh, what did i study i studied first uh, physics at the university of uh, brussels uh got a master in physics there this was very interesting because we started we were 80 80 students uh, first year we ended up uh, 16 uh, and the first year we were maybe five girls uh, sitting there on the benches, um, already it was something that somehow never really attracted women. And I had a discussion recently with my sister, she's a sociologist, and we were really thinking about, I, I talked about um, the fact that I, I, I want to educate my girls, because I also have two girls, I want to educate them into STEM and to really push it. And uh, um, I, I feel they are interested. But we were really looking at re studies about the fact that how does it come? Is there something even genetic that makes girls, even if there is a lot of promotion going on, why don't they really choose these directions? Is what what is really this barrier that makes already the difference? Even though there are a lot of people that are promoting or not promoting this difference, uh, why do we still have so? many men in the engineering world, in the science world, uh, compared, not, not all science world, but like physics and maths. Why is it more something where we find men and not? We couldn't find a, the, um, really the, um, the answer to that. So it's still uh, going to be a uh, research I'm going to do because it's really something that uh, takes it to the heart. I really want to promote women doing STEM and doing uh, doing that kind of things, because if we don't do it today, then at the end, when everything will be like uh, with artificial intelligence, we have to imagine all these codes are going to be created by men. And this is not OK, because the men do not think like we do. So I mean, with all respect for the men, of course, but um, uh, we really need to have women there. And, and 
we all can do it. Uh, and I know some 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 girls sometimes are afraid. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to combine this with being a mother, having kids, and so. But maybe this is why I can give some advice, be an example, sometimes inspire people because I, I do everything with my girls and I still work in a men's world. So um, I, I think this is this is a, a fake, uh, it's, it's a false image that we have uh, about women uh, in that industry. Uh, so um, yeah, I worked uh, in the beginning at the European Space Agency um, and I really, really, really got very close to my goal. So it was never easy. So you don't study to become an astronaut. You, you have to study, uh, you, you, you have to, to follow, uh, to do to gather as much possible uh, information or knowledge that you can towards one goal, knowing that there is not one path. So I studied physics, engineering, I did this MBA, uh, and I worked at the European Space Agency. But in the beginning, I worked like for uh, Earth observation, which was completely not what it was exciting me because I was excited by being, by going to space, by being sitting in this rocket and going to the moon or Mars. I wanted to be the first woman on Mars. Um, so it was really my drive. So you try, you try, you, you try. There is no, not one path. So I, when I worked there, um, the, the, the closest I got, in fact, is what, I became an astronaut instructor, which was somehow very nice, but also very frustrating because I was sitting on the other side of the bench. Uh, I would have <laughs> loved to be sitting on the other side. I even had been at the time, um, that was when I was 29, um, I went to and, and uh, I, I got as a reserve. But then for political reasons, uh, well, and so sorry for that, I have still another slide. I was working also on uh, missions to Mars, and which was great because I, I could be very um, uh, creative. Uh, uh, I could imagine things. How would we, um, you know, uh, it was really a study about habitability and ergonomics, how we would uh, fill in, uh, how we would arrange the rocket or the spaceship. Would we have one room? for everybody or would have everybody uh, a small place for themselves sitting there. Um, so it, it was quite interesting, though it was very, 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 um, I would say still a, a dream. It was not very um, hands-on activity. It was a study, it was creative, it was imaging. Uh, we did not have at the European Space Agency this uh, kind of uh, guts, I would say, that uh, they have in the States with Elon Musk. So someone who really takes the dream and changes it uh, instantly into, into reality. Uh, this, I think, is also a difference between uh, European Space Agency and, um, I mean, the European approach and the American approach of, of uh, space, um, uh, space endeavor. Um, but still, it gave me, that, of course, uh, a lot of uh, freedom to to keep on dreaming. Um, because, yeah, you may have it already understood. It uh, I'm I'm a big dreamer, uh, probably a very big uh, idealist. So that's why when uh, I was a candidate astronaut, at a certain point, there was a big crash in uh, 2003. I unfortunately. Uh, not unfortunately, it was a very well uh, uh, thought uh, decision. I stepped out of the program, stepped out of the program because I realized that um, uh, I, I had a moment of less naive <laughs> this idea. I realized that my, my place would probably be only free when I would be 49. And then in the meantime, I would have been sitting behind a computer on a chair waiting for something that most probably would not happen because by then there would be other people that would be fitter, keeping uh, fitter, younger, and etc. So I left everything and um, yeah, <laughs> to the great disappointment at the time of my parents, I decided to become a mountain guide, middle mountain guide. So I left to the mountains and I did that. Now a lot of people would say, what has that to do? Indeed, uh, I understand your parents. If you are like an engineer and then you start uh, giving uh, ski lessons in order to, to pay your studies to become a mountain guide, that's crazy. Yeah, understandable, but somehow I also combined this with a lot, a lot of uh, introspection and um, coaching and uh, 
uh, like for example, you, you know, the things like MBTIA, uh, Stephen Covey, uh, the, the habits of uh, effective people. I did that in order to understand really what was it, because somehow it was a little bit an identity crisis I faced when I was 30, because since I was a child, everybody called me the astronaut and everybody knew I wanted that. My grandfather uh, who, who died, he was like, you know, eating this, 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 uh, this protein shakes kind of thing. And he said, yeah, this is astronaut food like you will have there up there. So it was really an identity. Um, so I, I, it was really a difficult time and I understood that also what, what was really the trigger. Um, I didn't want to become an, an aerospace engineer just to, to create uh, like uh, engines or valves of a rocket. Uh, what I really wanted to do is to, it's a little bit the competition drive as well probably in me, is was to go somewhere where other people do not go. It was to to put myself again uh, in a challenging environment and come back with something to tell. I like, I, I really liked to, to, to have something to tell to people. I like to, to talk to people and, and just, just, you know, tell the story and maybe it hits something in someone's mind and you, you know, you have contributed to making things move uh, with uh, this person. Um, so I really, this, this time, these two years of really intense, uh, I would say break with my previous life, <laughs> um, really gave me the opportunity to think about who I am and understand who, uh, how I work, what is really my drive in my life. And I decided at then, then to become, um, self-employed and do what I like to do where I'm good at. So I became self-employed and uh, I I combined a little bit like, you know, uh, I created this company that is called Another Way. That's my company. And the, the, the motto of it is like dream it, plan it, live it. So I really said, okay, if you want to do something, okay, you plan to do it, you, you have a plan, you go for it and you try to live it. Maybe it go it it, it uh, it's you succeed. Maybe you fail. If you fail, you take your 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 learnings from there and you and you go on. So um, with this company, what 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 I did here, sorry, uh, is that I could uh, I, I do and I still do because it's still my management company. I do a lot of um, coachings in to companies about self leadership, team communication, and it, that's kind of stuff which I learned also from the astronaut trainings. I also did a lot of market research still for the European Space Agency because somehow if you learn so much in the beginning in the at school and you in and and you go to university, you can't at the end face com completely ignore it. And uh, I missed uh, the the trigger of intellectual aspects and uh, research and and being involved with technology. So I I did some market research. I became a sat satellite communication consultant with two other people that were a little bit of the kind of uh, same uh, DNA type. So they also um, left the, the classical way of, of working, but, um, and they were men. Um, they accepted me on the team and together we uh, did a lot of market uh, studies for the satellite communication industry. And from these studies, we created a company that uh, uh, is now a full existing company. It's at ADSL. Um, so I'm co-founder of that company. Um, uh, my role there is the to the COO, uh, so uh, dealing with operations and also public relations. Why public relations? It's very simple because there are many, uh, there are not a lot of women, and the men that are there, the engineers, the technical scientists, and so um, they they don't they don't bother with that. They they don't want to have things neat, etc. And we will come back to to this uh, to this aspect. Um, Satay DSL. In fact, what what we are doing very quickly is that we are we are striving to become the Booking.com of satellite. Um, uh, connectivity, meaning uh, of IP connectivity. So we are, in fact, aggregating a lot of uh, operators and IP connectivity providers on one platform, um, which we have fully created. So somehow uh, the company now, uh, we have uh, 25 people working for us. We exist now for 10 years exactly. Um, so it's not a startup anymore, but still the, 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 the mindset of a startup because we really are um, 
very uh, flexible and uh, maybe a little bit too much, to be honest. <laughs> we are still a little bit too much dreamers and, and free free wheelers. Uh, so we need to put some structures and uh, procedures in place. We are fully aware of that. Um, maybe I, I probably I'm not the best to do this because I quite I like to to create things. Uh, and once it becomes a little bit too uh, too much following a procedure, I, I start to get bored. But we have uh, great people to do this and great colleagues. Um, so uh, this this company uh, we, we work with a lot of companies. Uh, it's really very nice. We are an international based company. I'm uh, really really proud of having achieved that, which has something to do with space. But I'm still not in space. <laughs> uh, so will I ever go there? Now to be honest, between you and me, um, there is again an uh, opening uh, for um, astronauts in um, in Europe. Um, it's absolutely not the same as in the States. Uh, um, here they have opened it and up to 50 years. I'm 46, so, well, I did it. I just did it because um, I would not like to be facing, like, um, you know, to say, well, I, I, I need to do it. Otherwise, I would say, okay, I had the chance and I didn't, participate so that's a little bit um, that's a little bit of pity so I, I did it uh, actually I pushed the button yesterday so it's very fresh I uh, will see what happens uh, I don't know if I still want to do it uh, ex really because I, I really want to go but the, the, the I would say the, the reference changes because now I have two kids and uh, seven and nine and I don't know if I'm ready now um, to leave them alone for for one for one year. So, uh, um, well, I, I yeah, it's a it's still a dream, and I'm really uh, very um, following this very narrowly. Um, so, what we did with Satellite DSL is also this is a typical example of things we do. We provide connectivity in small villages in Africa, and those little. People uh, you see here on the picture, they are very happy because they, they got the internet in their small village uh, in order to have uh, decent lessons uh, provided by a professor that is in, in the capital. So uh, that's very, um, that, that's really a nice project. It's a, it, it, is, it is a technical and scientific world of men, but as you see, you still have a lot of, um, Emotion as well. Caroline, fantastic yep. presentation. Congrats on this recent recognition. Mm -hmm. You did a fantastic job. <laughs> I really love that you said, like, the motto of your company dream it, plan it, live it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I think a great takeaway of your talk. And I think you did masterfully with the slides that you prepared, the energies that you put. So, really enjoyed this talk today. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us as a speaker. Stay <laughs> with us. People shared that. Anusha shared that it was one of her favorite talks, actually, just so you know. Yeah, thank you. The networking, I'm sure many people would love to connect with you. It was a pleasure to have you with us on this stage. Okay, thank you. <laughs>